After four months of cold, spring is finally here. I've been trying to prioritize the projects to get the Bohemian ship shape for the upcoming sailing season. So let's get started on the hull chain plate, the rigging, the deck chain plate, and the rudder system. So this is the first neglected chain plate that's got to get fixed. Now do you see all that fiberglass that sets all around it? That's got to get cut away to get the moisture released from underneath it. So let's take a look. No turning back. So if the mat wants to fall, it'll fall. But look, you see that? That's not that's not rust off that chain plate. That's a, some kind of spacer crap that's been that's bonded to the other steel. So once I clean all that up, it'll be fine. And then grease it and keep grease or, or lana coat or grease on it or both. And then this steel is like grade i think like a eight a bolt that's like a grade eight bolt that's super strong so those bolts get rust they get rusty on the outside but the inside stays strong for a long time so that's what that steel is but you can tell they used whatever steel they used for a spacer on the side and they had it all the way down it was like covering up this whole side it was it wasn't the same grade steel it doesn't make any sense but that's what it was All right, now that it's all cleaned up, I'll put some of this grease all over it and then lana coat on the inside because the stainless steel goes in here. So whenever different types of metal touch each other, you need to use lana coat. There's the lana coat. So I'm, this is almost empty, but that's what smells like. It smells like an old sheet. That's what it smells like is made from sheep but so just make sure you get anywhere where that stainless steel is going to be doing it i don't know like the best way but i'm going to make sure i get it there and then on the stainless steel so when i slide that bracket back on there i'll put it on the stainless steel and that stainless this lana coat will be touching the grease but i don't know if it'd been better just to cover that with lana coat or what I, i'm almost out of lana coat, so it's going to be grease it just so happened a northwesterly blew in right after I got the rod rigging back in place. So I tightened and added some lines and took a break from all the boat projects to go to our son's wedding and pick up a new crew member, our grandson, Dakota.
my channel. And, and come on over here. I'll show you. I'd have to say that's the youngest subscribe and like bit I've seen on a YouTube channel yet. So I'm going to take that deck plate out. And to do that, I have to remove all that rigging right there. So let's get to it. All right, so now all the rigging's been removed, I've got to take that plate off and get an oscillator and cut out all that adhesive to go below and pull that deck plate out. This chain plate's been leaking for a long time. So right here, there's a prism. It leaked really bad. So all this ceiling stuff is bad. And then I'll just get you, I'll just get PVC board. You got quarter inch PVC board. Looks just like it, same color. Goes up there, Never if it gets wet. You know, back when they made this boat, if they probably had PVC board, I bet they probably would have used it. But, uh, and then all this mold. This mold and funk, it all has to get cleaned up. All this wood's got to get taken, new wood put in, and get rid of the mold. Just like that, just like that house. It's, you know, you've got to get rid of the mold whenever you have a chance to. And uh, so this, see, this, this thing will drop right out. Now, move oh, about drop it on the table. And then that'll slide out. See, and there's the chain plate. And it looks like it's pretty good shape. There's a little bit of rust on it, but this will clean up. I'm pretty sure it will. And I can have these made new, but I'd have to take, back in Clinton, Missouri, there's a school, a trade school where they treat, teach kids how to uh, weld and fabricate. So if I spent two or $3,000 on a sheet, a four by eight sheet of 316 stainless steel, I could have, they'll do it for free. And it won't be polished. I'd have to polish it up, but they'd make it and it'd be free except for what I had paid for the thing. But I don't, these don't need re replaced. They're, if I was going to do a total refit of all the boat and all the rigging, then I'd change the chain place too. But that's not happening. I'm not spending the money. I'm going to fix it up, sail it. And when I'm done with it, who knows? I don't know what the future is going to be, but I'm going to, I'm just going to fix it and get all the maintenance done to it and get it back in order. Everybody's lunch, okay? What is that? It's pork, pulled pork. You want a little bit of uh, barbecue sauce on it? Yeah. So now we've had a little bit of lunch, 
And it's all about cleaning it up and drying it out. That's old 4200, and that's the old adhesive that was put when the boat was built brand new. I, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. So that stuff that seems a little bit stronger than the, the, the white stuff was. Got it? Yep. So now you see what happens when you have a boat, a sailboat, and you don't epoxy these these seams in there, the you end up with a wet core. And now granted this has teak deck screws all through it, it's probably what got wet anyway. But if you ever buy a boat, I would make sure a rigger came and check to see if those were epoxy. And I, I would check instead of, and see if that's all wet. And uh, so let's move on. Now it's time to start working on the turnbuckles and getting them cleaned up. So I'll put a heat gun, dry that fiberglass out for the adhesive of bond well. You don't have to worry about which side goes to which because they're backwards. So the threading is only going to thread back on on one side no matter what. So you can't get it backwards once you take it all apart. And then after I get them apart, you see right now it's, there's lana coat, old lana coat on all that threading. You don't have to worry about scratching these up if you got, because it's old. They're old. They're made out of brass and they're coated with chrome. And that chrome's long gone by It's never going to come back. You have to buy new ones if you want them super shiny. So it takes a minute to clean these up. So once I get them all apart, then I just stick it in, stick it in the kerosene. So these nuts are the locking caps that locks this from spinning. You've got to get, get those off and then it's all broke apart. So just get you a bat of kerosene and then stick them in there. So now that all the turnbuckles have been cleaned up and coated with lana coat, the last step is to rebed the chain plate. So if you make a mess, you can just clean it up easily with acetone. 
I should have been using black 4200, but I couldn't, it was, the white was easily available. So the next episode is all about the rudder system and a trip to Donald Shaw's to get a part made for the rudder with a tip from Rob at Bacon Sales of a place called Billy Warren's that specializes in new surplus stainless steel and fabrication. 